Well, hello, hello. Uh, this is a new episode of Dance Games, and while the clock is uh, ticking down, uh, I'm going to introduce you to the topic of today, what stops you to start dancing. And of course, we won't start uh, not only dancing with this podcast without, of course, inviting my good friend and colleague, Ton Greten. Ton, are you there? Yes. You are on mute, Ton. Sorry, Sean. It's okay. nice to see you nice and to see nice you to hear you. Yeah, what stops you to start dancing? That's uh, that's the title of today. Uh, and, and that's something I came up with. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, fantastic uh, topic because you and I, we started also somewhere to dance mm-hmm. because we are dancers and teachers and coaches, etc. But there is a time when we started also and i know my first time when i started and my mom said this is for your life so this is very important for your education for your life education and i said okay i i will start it and after six weeks five weeks six uh, i have the dance virus (laughs) So I'm in, infected by the dance virus, yes. And I still, I have it. And I developed a lot from then. It was in 1981, I think. Yeah. Wow. That's so long ago. Let me not start to think about when I started <laughs> to dance. <laughs> it is too long ago. Yeah, but we all we all needed to uh, start and we all have different reasons to start. Uh, now, clearly, Tom and I started to dance and, and never regret it, to be honest. Uh, but there is, I'm, maybe I regret that I didn't start earlier, uh, which we also hear. But, but the question of today is, why is it that some people maybe want to dance but they just are afraid to start um to start dancing and it could be various things in there that we do uh and so we're going to explore a couple of things right and and sometimes it is you know if you know uh dance jams we and you follow us then you know that we do the same topic in two languages one in dutch which is our own language and the other one is in english and Strangely enough, it's not exactly the same podcast. <laughs> so if you know two languages, I would definitely stimulate you to listen to both because that's kind of funny. But, you know, one of the things that Tom talked about yesterday is there are definitely social barriers. Why some people, you know, are a little bit afraid to dancing. In some in some social circles, it's just not done for guys to dance. You know, that's where I want to start up. Tom, what do you think about that? Yes, uh, that. This is correct, Sean. It's something from the culture, what you get yep. uh, from your environment. And people say it's for gay people or... But uh, actually, the ballet in 19... No, not 19, in 1500, about 1500, yeah. the men were only dancing. And the women started actually much more later i think 1700 1800 something like that something with like ballet that, yeah. yeah yeah so this is uh quite uh later and also the teachers all only men teach before that is also strange now it's not possible anymore and um, but at that time yes it was And when you reflect uh, the ballet dancing and the social dancing 100 years backwards from now, that was um, totally different than now. So everything changed. Also now it changed through TikTok, through Fortnite, uh, the social media, YouTube is also social media. But you can see so much of dancing. And also, if you want to learn dancing, and this is our our subject, um, this is, um, you can find everything mostly on YouTube. The beginner's lessons, um, all kinds of dance forms you can uh, discover. And I would recommend to watch first to this one. And then try to find a school 
um, in the neighborhood and then try to start with it and or take first contact that would be uh, fine and look for a professional this will help up absolutely because the most of them have a lot of experience and can help you through the first um, afraidness of I don't have a rhythm, I cannot dance, etc. So what would be your reaction, Sean, when somebody comes into your studio and would say that to you? Yeah. Well, of course, when they already come to um, to our or my studio, then they already took that first barrier to come to the studio, which is great. But I always am very, you know, aware that someone is coming for the first time to a class. Often it's a class. Sometimes it's a uh, first time and immediately start with private lessons. We can talk about that too. But in the class, I'm very aware that that I can see they just, you know, want to scoop out what's going on. <laughs> and so, and then one of the, uh, and one of the things that they start with is always to say, I cannot dance. I have no rhythm or my husband or my partner has no rhythm. So I, I, I honestly don't know why people do that to themselves, why they downplay the <laughs> themselves, but it's what it is. But to be honest, uh, and let's take that thing that's probably one of the most hurt things. I have no rhythm or my husband has no rhythm. There's actually no such thing. There's no such thing as you have no rhythm because, you know, your heart has a rhythm. Your breathing has a rhythm. Your whole life is actually a, a string of rhythms. Whole life, the whole universe is a string of rhythms, if you think about it so mm. that we don't have it and but i know what they mean right they they typically feel that they cannot hear what other people use as a rhythm to dance on hmm? yes. no one says th that they yeah. yeah no one says I that is what your rhythm i know i yeah. know what they want to say sean sorry that i interrupt uh, you um probably they want to say i'm stuck in my body yeah, they, they could be. There's, I think it's an inhibition in, in, in daring to let go. Remember I was telling you yesterday about, about a class that I did and I said, can you please dance on what you hear and not what you know? And I think there is a little bit of the answer in that people believe that they have to know something uh, to dance. And so typically my dance lessons, classes always start, what do you hear? right? Uh, it could also start with just losing up the body, you know, just not even thinking about music, just, you know, be a little bit more free in your body and make, you know, what people might think is crazy movements for you and I are, they just movements. There is no judgment of a movement, right? So yes. these factors, uh, I think with official dance studios, different than yours, by the way, but in most official dance studios, I think they believe they have some sort of a picture in their mind that they need to fit in. And of course they cannot fit in that picture yet because they just come to the first dance lesson. Right. And that's, I think what they mean when they say, I have no rhythm. That's yes. what I think. What do you think? Uh, yes. Um, correct, Sean. And also they forget they have a daily rhythm. And if they would listen to that one and uh, mm -hmm. rhythm of breathing of mm -hmm. their heart, of um, when they listen to it and bring that back to the body and be more relaxed and released, mm -hmm. then it would help you to pick it more faster, um, I would say, that you could enter the dance lesson and it makes you not so afraid to start. So it's important not to have how you say that um, um i forgot the english word um the expectation you have some expectations from it and you said the same uh, one yeah. minute ago sean and forget this expectation let it uh, come over you and try and listen to the advice of the teacher and um yeah. and even what I know from the history is when you have five or six weeks and you are in the lesson five, six weeks after that, it will work. It's the same with skiing. If you have the first time ski lessons, don't think you can go 
of the mountain. Yeah, you can go off the mountain yeah. after one lesson. It's gravity, Todd. <laughs> it's gravity. <laughs> it's gravity. <laughs> So that would be nice. But if you but, want yeah. to feel safe, then yeah. you need a few lessons. Oh, and after right. the few lessons, yeah. you will probably mm. like it. And it's the same with running. Yeah. If you start with running and you want to do a 5K and yeah. you go like crazy, <laughs> of course yeah. you will not like it after it because everything will hurt you. Yeah. So yeah. do it with small steps. steps. And yeah. yes, and not... Yeah big steps and have so many expectations from it so go free in it and everybody can learn dancing salsa bachata um, a waltz a english waltz a slow fox a samba a cha-cha-cha hip-hop everything you can learn because these are defined dances and they have normally a method for it to learn yeah yeah no i think i think that's exactly right and you can orientate yourself already what what do you think at the first on first that you think you like you know some people come in and they like salsa and then they they get exposed to the other dances and they think oh i like you know west coast swing more which is great i mean you don't have to do that the studio like ours i'm not going to make um, commercial for it but we offer so many different dances and we stimulate actually people to to explore all the other dances um, and then some people get I don't want to say stuck but they have a preference maybe for one style only that's good too other people say no I am more like I want to do everything that's also great right do what you do but there's one thing what you said which I uh, often use in, in, in definitely in my mental coaching is uh, is uh, tr due to due to social media we have a little bit of belief now that we have to be good at everything we do but actually it, it serves you well in life and also in dancing is that you get used to suck <laughs> at everything that you start doing everything that you start doing in the beginning you probably will be bad and that is really okay. Actually, there's a lot of fun in understanding that that is. And if you look back at where you started, if you look back at Tons and Me first podcast, you think like, maybe you guys still think that we're bad at it. Who knows, right? But <laughs> who knows? But um, but that's what it is. We have to accept that. But it's that shame that sometimes come up that stops us from doing the things that we actually would love to do. So, yes. Uh, Correction. That's that's a little bit what it is. So sometimes you have, and this is not a common guys. This is just tons in my opinion, and sometimes not even. If you're a dance teacher and you have a beginners class, uh, it's not about you. You don't have to show off how well you can dance. Actually, that doesn't help people. It makes them a little bit afraid. Now maybe at the end of the class you could maybe do a little bit of a demo how you maybe in the future can see how this dance can be. But if you constantly show how well you can move, right, it actually makes the other people believe like, wow, yeah, well, this guy is doing this 30 years. If I had to do it 30 years before I get to that, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. So, so meet them a little bit closer to where they are. That would be a little bit my advice. You need to do your style, but that's a little bit my advice. It's always good on the other side to start with a beginner's class. You might have had a few classes, maybe in another studio. Just start with a beginner's class again. If you go fast enough, your teacher will say, hey, why don't you join us in the other class? Because you're yes, already good. Correct. So all these things you can set up yourself be relaxed in it because most people start dancing first and foremost to have fun right not to mm -hmm. get the fear <laughs> in you um there is also some more serious problems that people have uh ton uh, and i would like to hear your opinion about it is some people believe that their body is not good enough they are feel that they're too short too tall too blonde too asian too chinese too black too fat too thin whatever comes up right yeah, too old too, too old <laughs> too young whatever yeah. it is yes yeah whatever correction that, yeah that's not only uh, cultural social different but that could also be in you like, oh, yeah, yes yeah. it's already in you and yeah. if you have this thought it's already in you it's yeah. a manifestation of um that you think that your body is not good enough but the mind is actually feeding this 
Yes. But it's not correct because everybody um, can exactly. learn to dance and everybody can already dance. Yep. But learn to dance in the form mm -hmm. of of the steps of a salsa or a West Coast swing or hip hop or a cha cha. Mm -hmm. These are more defined steps. And of course, you will get guidance from your teacher and they will help you. And you said one thing, and this, this is the most, most important. If you do a podcast, you do running, you do skiing or dancing, have fun. That's the most important and enjoy the moment in your life. And it brings more positive things. Your social life will improve. Absolutely. Even when you move in dancing, the positive is you use left and right of your brain and your proprioception is a very expensive word, word, but your body awareness of left and right, you will improve it. Even the, um, uh, how you said, uh, door bleeding. I don't know how you call this in English. Yeah. In I your head. Just, yeah. The, just blood flow. If the if blood flow. Wanted. Yeah. Yes, that will improve the blood flow in your head. And this is very, very important because if you want uh, to get older, it's very, very important to move. Doesn't matter if you walk, if you do um, your housekeeping or you're running or you're dancing. And the dancing is, of course, something beautiful what you can do together with your partner, man, man or man, woman, doesn't matter now in 2023, actually. But um, yeah, it has so many positive things. Oh, yeah. No, it's in, it's incredible. If you know, if you follow John and uh, and Tom in the podcast, then we uh, try at least uh, in all modesty to extend our dance knowledge and the knowledge about the body a little bit beyond just uh, regular dancing. And in my case, uh, it has to do with people with traumatic experience. And uh, so we, we often talk about the connection of the body and the mind. And it's also that same belief that there is a connection between the body and the mind uh, and and just follow me very closely when i say this there is a belief that there is a connection if you believe there is a connection then there should also be a disconnection and that has become a normal way of saying things if you listen very closely to ton and me then you hear us talking that the body and mind are actually one sometimes we need to separate them to talk about it but there is one that it's not there is but believing that there are two things has separated us in this world for believing that we know things but we cannot move with our body anymore and, mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the big benefits i think you can get uh, from dancing to feel that oh yeah the body and mind is actually one influences the other one immediately you make yourself more free in your body you get more free in your mind <laughs> you get more free in your mind you get more free in your body there is there's a one-on-one -on -one actually there is no connection because it's one and if there's one mm -hmm. there is no connection <laughs> does that make sense so that's what i do but it's at the same time um some uh, reason why people don't dare to go to a dance uh, lesson, Tom, is because, yeah. you know, I'm sitting the whole day in the office, so my body is disconnected from my mind. They already believe that. And because of that false belief, they don't want to do things like dance lessons or running or other exercises. Yes, it's, uh, it's very, very good for your health, for everything. It's very good. So, and be the advice what i could give be mm -hmm. patient and take it yeah. step by step small steps and at the end if after five six weeks yeah. you will really enjoy it i'm i'm sure of it yeah because yeah, it um, it's something new but if you are on a dance school and the teacher will help you and give you also the attention what you need then um it's absolutely fun. Yeah, it's absolutely fun. And and I think that's a good thing to say because, you know, another reason why people don't start to dance anymore 
is sometimes they had a very bad experience in the past and and the rules and if you're as old as stone and i are yeah you there were some weird dance studios where there was a s pure segregation men do this and women do that so we had all that and it could have been badly influenced you but you will notice now if you haven't been in a dance studio lately that most dance studios are you know a, a very open ways of looking at things we actually I think we're very most of the open place. So you could have negative experience. Maybe you had a bad dance teacher or dance bad dance partner. But as with everything in life, your first experience does not, you know, equate that everything should be like that, right? So if you went to a restaurant, let's say a Chinese restaurant, and the food didn't taste well, that doesn't mean that all Chinese restaurants are bad. <laughs> does that make sense? But we sometimes stay with that. Like, oh, yeah, I went once to Spain, and there was a horrible country. But now you had one bad event. And that was a horrible experience. So it's maybe a little bit of a mental push from our side to try it again. If you have it in your mind as a question, you probably uh, you probably want it. Um, well, yesterday we had a pretty serious discussion also about there could be economical reasons, uh, Tom, why some people don't go to dance. Money, they think that dancing is 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 expensive to some extent. That is maybe true. But what can we say to that if we want to help people? Um, no, I think you can dance always if you have internet or you can somewhere on the internet and you can watch to the dancing there. Mm -hmm. There are beginners lessons on it on, on a YouTube channel. You can yeah. find everything about every dance form. You can find that. So actually take some lessons there and start with it very slowly. And of course, if you go to a dance school, you have your social contact and if you and it is when it would be too expensive you can actually do um, first lesson the most lessons are free in the beginning so you can try um, to take one or two lessons and you not have to pay for it and then you can look if you can afford it and there are differences also in studios the one studio asked um, for six lessons, uh, $75. And another uh, studio asked $50. And another studio asked $20. So there is a difference yeah. in the studios. So they have not everywhere the same price. Yeah. 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 By no means do we want to pretend that we can uh, look in your wallet, as we say in Dutch, right? Um, mm -hmm. So that we know how much money you can and cannot spend. But again, if you already have that question and you have a little bit afraid to do your first thing, that could be one of the things. And I don't want to say it's an excuse, but there are many ways to find it. You know, a lot of studios in the U.S. I, I teach uh, primarily in the U.S., we have a lot of, you know, starter things like Groupon where you can basically get almost one or two lessons completely for free. So that's uh, one way to do at least get to know it. Uh, the other thing is also see the relative if it's important for you. See on what things you can spend your money uh, different so that you can experience a good uh, a good dance lesson. Yeah, starting on YouTube is, is definitely uh, one of them. And don't fall in the trap of, uh, you know, it is too expensive. If that's what you want, you probably will find a way. And then if there if there are, if I know that from the Netherlands specifically, for some people, the health benefits for dancing are so big that actually they can get reimbursed or partly reimbursed through insurance. So I would look at that as well. If you're super healthy, you just do it for fun. No chance, <laughs> but if it's even for other that, reasons, yeah, yeah, correct, Sean. And even the children in our city in the south of the Netherlands, yeah, but also the whole Netherlands, mm -hmm. you if you not have enough income, the city will help you to uh, pay that. Fantastic, and yes, Fantastic. and uh, yeah. because it's important mm -hmm. that they have the social contact and that they can still dance. So, I'm quite proud of our country that they. Yep. Uh, do that. Yeah, can, they do that also for the sport not only for the dancing yeah and uh, this is really uh, fantastic. fantastic but also one. when it, when you have the money and you go to the dance school and you do the lessons in our studio we have like three or four events a year like a christmas event a disco fox event a salsa event 
So that's uh, really nice because you get uh, two or three months lessons in that one. And then you go with your friends and you go to it. If they're not have lessons, you can ask um, or you learn it. You learn then what you learned and they can still dance or um, yeah. you take some extra lessons together and then you go to the beautiful evening of a Christmas ball. Nice. nice. And then uh, you are together, you eat a little bit, you speak, you have nice music and your social contact will uh, improve a lot because you are together with your friends. And That's what cool. is the most beautiful to have a beautiful yep. evening together and uh, enjoy that one. Yeah, you're a good salesman, Tom. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. And but I think I think the overarching message in this is, uh, if you only look at, hey, I pay for an hour of dance lessons and this is what I get back, that might not be a good value for you, right? But if you think about what all the other things you get through it, right? I mean, if you only would say the health benefits. It's actually a really cheap way to stay healthy, <laughs> if you think about it like that. Um, so that's one thing. And then if it comes to social uh, social activities, um, there are tons of people actually in our studio, Tom, that their main reason is to meet people. Now, of course, you can take a fancy, uh, you know, partner consultancy firm or you go online, but this is kind of a fun way to meet people. So if you look at the money in a slightly different way, and again, I cannot look, we, we don't know what your money is, of course, but there is a way to what we call reframing your thoughts around it slightly differently. Like, oh yeah, actually I get so much more. I get social activity, I get new friends maybe, or maybe even a new partner. I get health benefits. You know, if you think about it, then maybe we are in the cheapest industry that you can, <laughs> that you can be. but there are story out there, you know, that dancing is expensive and we mostly talk about, uh, about, um, competitive dancing. I have one story to tell about that. And I have a new student and, uh, she stopped a little bit for, um, with dancing because her husband was jealous because she would dance with handsome guys like me. And, uh, and then she said to her husband, Hey, you either have an unhappy wife or a happy wife. And if you want a happy wife, you pay my dance lessons. So that's how she worked around that topic. <laughs> See, he wanted to clearly have a happy wife. <laughs> so paid for her dance lessons. Anyhow, that's a little bit of a joke, but it's a little bit uh, also, uh, you know, the happiness was... Uh, was one of the was one of the things. Yeah, that's a little bit. You know what we want to talk about today is you know what are the barriers or or you know what stops you for t for taking a dance lesson. And Ton and I say, don't let anything stop you to take a dance lesson. And then uh, after the first three four lessons, uh, you will enjoy it so much. Uh, Ton says five or six maybe. Okay, let's then make an agreement with yourself. Whatever happens, I'm going to do it at least for six weeks and then I'll make a decision because these little angst and anxieties, they will come up in the first lesson. They might even become bigger, you know, because there are mirrors around us and there are people around you that, yeah, they had a few more lessons. So go work to it with the five, six weeks. I always say that. And then suddenly you get that dance virus. <laughs> You're on mute on. Sean, Sean, yeah. this is with everything like that. If you yeah. run the first time, everything will hurt, of course. So run slowly, then you have less pain. So when you run the second time, you still have pain because you never did it. So with the dancing, it's the same. And if I learn skiing, after one lesson, it will not say I can ski. No, it's technically you, you learn that and after a few lessons, after a week, uh, because yeah, you have everyday good. lessons, then you can slowly get from that mountain. Up. Yeah, you can. But, yes. You know, yeah. But I also notice it's a little bit character based, right? I am, uh, you know, if, uh, if I'm a little bit enthusiastic at everything I do, so I immediately jump in everything full, you know, you know, full in it. And that hurts sometimes, <laughs> you know, if I, if you put me on skis and I'm on there for two hours, I think I can take the black piece there, you know, that, 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 that thing. So I have that mm. in me. Other people are completely on the flip side and you just need to warm up and it takes a long time before they get warmed up. So if you go to dance lesson, 
try to also understand a little bit your own character, right? I mm -hmm. would immediately do it, and that of course does get you get big disasters because I overestimate my own abilities always. But it's just my enthusiastic character, and nothing wrong with it. Other people are a little bit more careful with character, and they just you know need to warm up to things. And uh, so know your own character about that as well. Other people are very skeptical. I'm hmm, not sure if this is the right teacher for me. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> you know, that's that's all fine. Know your own character helps you a lot too in uh, in doing these things for the first time. Anyhow, yeah. I think that was it for today, Tom. Um, yes, thank you for sure. uh, talking to uh, me about this. Uh, we'll be back soon, of course, with the Dance Gems and have a new topic for you. Um, we don't know what it is yet, uh, and, but if you have an idea, by the way, as dear listeners and viewers of our podcast, and you would like us to talk about something, then by all means, you know, you can find us on social media, just send us a message, and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about that as well. All right, as long as it has something to do with dance, obviously, right? Okay, Tom, um, having said that, uh, it was a pleasure as always seeing you here on the podcast of the Dance Jams. I hope to see you back real soon. I already say bye-bye. Maybe you want to say bye-bye too. Yes, I want also to say bye-bye and dance every day, a small dance. You will get more happy. Oh, that's so beautiful. All right, you people will see you next time. I'll start the music and then we'll say bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>